Big thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Do you want to become the next Nintendo? Because there's a very high chance that you can by upping the quality of your homemade projects by using PCBWay. PCBWay is the go-to place for all things PCB. They make all the PCBs, including flexible ones. They now also include 3D printing, CNC machining, injection molding. Check out PCBWay through the link in the description and you can get your first order free. Hey everyone, how's it going? Elliot here. Welcome to the Retro Future. I'm going to be doing a restoration and repair to a Game & Watch. This right here is what started it all off for Nintendo. Before this, they were a toy and games manufacturing company. This is Nintendo's first Game Boy, first Nintendo DS, first Nintendo Switch. This is what started it all off. And look at where we are now with the release of the OLED Switch. This is what started it all off. This thing was released in 1980, you can see on the, the back there. And the Game & Watch was this really awesome thing that people could chuck in their pocket. It only played one game, and this one is sort of like a juggling game called Ball. In fact, they just released this again on the brand new Mario Bros Game & Watch that they released last year. And Ball was basically just a little juggling game. You've got left, you've got right, and that moves the guy who juggles the balls. Um, the very last Game & Watch they made was called Mario the Juggler. And that is basically another juggling game. You can see you've got left and you've got right. It's the same game. They just sort of rebranded it. But here we have the difference of uh, the Game & Watches over the years. This one is the first one in 1980. And this one is the last one in 1991. So uh, they're both incredibly expensive. These ones here go for about £1,000. And these ones can go up to about £500. But I managed to find one faulty on eBay for 50 quid. So I thought... Let's repair it. Now, I love collecting Game & Watches. I've actually got quite a few of them, and there's definitely some that seem to be a lot more iconic than Ball. Uh, this was the first time Nintendo used a D-pad and stuff, and obviously you've got that clamshell design that went on to influence the Nintendo DS, but for some reason, Ball doesn't seem to be quite as iconic as uh, some of those other ones, and I'm not sure why, because this thing is the first Nintendo handheld. So let me show you what the issue is. I mean, one of the issues is I've got the wrong battery cover on it. I am gonna have to keep an eye out for the right one. Um, but if I chuck these batteries in here and show you what we're dealing with, as you can see, the screen is blank. But if you tilt it this way, you should actually start to see the game. Now, that's a great sign that this thing is working. However, when you then press game A, you would expect it to start, but nothing is happening. And also it should have a little speaker in it, which you can just see in the back of the molding there. And that doesn't seem to be doing anything. So I'm fairly certain this thing is kaput. I have absolutely no idea what it's gonna involve trying to fix this, but I'm gonna give it my best shot. And just to show you that it's not the batteries, let me chuck these batteries into here real quick. There you go, you can see there. That worked perfectly. Ah, uh, it wouldn't let me jump. Okay, right, let's, uh, let's try and fix it. So the disassembly starts with a flathead screwdriver. The modern Nintendo consoles all use tri-wing screws, but Nintendo didn't start using these until a few years later. After that, we can slide the back off, and here, I discovered I wasn't the first one to attempt to repair this, which is never a good sign. The speaker wires were detached. That's our sound problem figured out. After removing a further three screws, I discovered some other issues. There was a hairline crack through the motherboard, as well as some exposed damaged traces, which were all soldered together in a clump. Now let's start with the obvious. We will apply some flux and sort out the solder problem. After that, we can clean it all off with some isopropyl alcohol and get a good idea of what is actually damaged. The speaker wires were then stripped, tinned and resoldered into place. I 
I then decided to fit it all back together, confident I have made some sort of improvement to this device, only to discover it's exactly the same. Back to the drawing board. I disassembled the Game & Watch again and this time took out my multimeter. I went over the board with continuity to figure out if any of the traces were actually damaged. Since this is a very simple device, it's clear to see where the traces go. That clump of solder seemed to have traces which led to the sound, start buttons and screen. To do trace repairs, you need very thin gauge wire. I stripped and tinned the wire and scratched away some of the trace to expose a part which wasn't damaged. I then followed the trace and did the same thing to a part further down beyond all of the damaged parts. We then simply bridge a wire over this gap and that should solve the bad trace problem. After doing that, I tried to put the whole thing back together. One of the other issues I was experiencing was trying to sit down the rubber screen connector. These actually have small conductive traces inside them which sit on the motherboard and glass and send the signals vertically up the rubber to the screen. Someone had hand cut a new reflective film for the back of the screen and their cut was preventing the rubber from sitting properly. So I cut it again and managed to get a much better connection. After screwing it back together, I discovered the screen was now on and that the time button worked, but I couldn't get it to start a game. So then I went back to the damaged traces and bridged all of the other ones. This was the final result. It bloody works. That is fantastic. So it was just those broken traces. Oh. And then the final thing to do was clean it properly and put it all back together. And here is the final product. I'm really, really happy with how this has turned out. It's never gonna be the best condition Game & Watch ball out there in the world. If anything, this is probably one of the worst. However, the fact that it works makes me really, really happy. I was able to get it fixed, it didn't cost me a lot, and now I can play the first ever Nintendo handheld console and relive that history. It's a really, really fun game. Um, it's very, very simple, and it's extremely addictive. I'm 
Oh, no, it's so difficult to see it at this angle. But yeah, I mean, it's such a fun little game. There's two modes. One makes it go slightly faster um, and adds another ball. Um, but yeah, it's it's just such a fun game. And it's really cool to think that obviously Nintendo have just released the Zelda Game & Watch. And this is what started it all off, let alone just this uh, re-edition of a Game & Watch. But actually, the Nintendo Switch now as a thing would not exist without this exact thing in my hand. And goodness knows what gaming would look like without this thing in general. So yeah, a very, very important part of history. Repaired, not necessarily restored. It's still in pretty poor condition, but I'm very, very pleased with this. I hope you've enjoyed this little uh, repair. It's not exactly the most exciting one, but if you did enjoy it, please leave a like. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe. If you made it this far, leave a comment just saying ball and I'll heart it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next one. Bye.